you're watching the air report we have tons of insane ai news to cover today let's get into it let's start with jobs chat gpt creator sam altman is keeping it real here he basically says don't kid yourself this ai thing we're working on will definitely kill some jobs it will also make many workers more productive and also some new jobs will be created so there will be winners but there will also be some losers as well by the way if you want to be on the winning side here subscribe to this channel we have lots of exciting stuff today that's all i can say for now speaking of new jobs we have a new position over at netflix ai product managers will earn nine hundred thousand dollars a year this is amidst all the actor protests 87 percent of whom by the way earn less than twenty six thousand dollars a year well that sucks for the actors obviously it really does but earning money by being smart is also a little bit harder than earning money for being hot so maybe there is some fairness to the whole disbalance here and it's not just big movie companies that are coming up with new ai jobs young people particularly in nigeria are figuring out ways to create ai jobs for themselves man i love the nigerians they're so resourceful the entrepreneurial force is strong with them I wonder what happened to that lovely prince that once emailed me about needing help to restore his empire. Anyway, prompt engineers, data labeling and cleaning, and annotation are among the most popular new AI gigs that young Nigerians are working on. Go for it. Next, a study by Adobe on over 6,000 digital workers finds that AI is making them a lot more productive, with many even calling it a miracle. It is a productivity multiplier that does a lot of the boring stuff instead of them, and both the workers and their bosses view AI adoption as inevitable. My two cents here, you can resist the change all you want, but it's coming. Better to prepare for it. I'm not gonna ask you again to subscribe so that you can stay ahead and learn about AI and all of that. I'm definitely not gonna do that. This is me not asking you to subscribe. Moving on, in the BMW factory in Spartanburg, South Carolina, AI is used to speed things up, especially when it comes to welding and fixing defects. It is a fully closed loop, says BMW Group Manager Curtis Tingle. AI removes the human thinking, the human manual intervention, directly out of the equation. We're achieving five times of what we thought was possible before with what the AI is achieving now. Mm, okay, that sounds like some more people might lose their jobs at this plant. AI giveth, AI taketh away. But for the tech giants, it will give it a lot more than it taketh away. Stuart Russell, a UC Berkeley professor, predicts AI will create 14 quadrillion dollars of wealth in 20 years. Quadrillion. I guess we're just making up numbers now. A few episodes ago, we were talking about how these AI numbers start to casually throw around trillions, like trillions of dollars or value added to the economy, trillion dollar companies, evaluations, all of that, but that was not enough apparently. And now we have quadrillions. Russell estimates the distribution of most of these 14 quadrillion dollars in the following way. Apple gets 2.5 quadrillion, Microsoft gets 2 quadrillion, Google gets 1.5, Amazon 1.1, and Meta gets 0.7 quadrillion. Ha, huh, stupid Meta, can't even make a whole quadrillion. Anyway, yeah, I used to say that the previous estimates were too small, but this one is too big for my taste. It is estimated that the entire GDP of the world is somewhere around 100 trillion dollars now, or 0.1 quadrillion if we express it in quadrillion terms. To get to 14 quadrillion, we would need the entire economy to grow 140 times in the next 20 years. Yeah, I wouldn't bet on that. Okay, let's continue talking about big beautiful companies that will one day be worth quadrillions. Microsoft will spend boatloads of money on providing AI services to an increasingly hungry market, notably new data centers to support AI. Revenue is expected to grow, but not as much as expenses. So Microsoft is making a long play here, continuing to invest in AI. Google, on the other hand, made a rebound in the last quarter. In the quarter before that, ad revenue was down and investors were kind of skeptical about how the AI storm will play out for Google's advertising business. Well, it played out fine, in case you're wondering, Alphabet earned more than 18 billion in profit with a 58 billion ad revenue. So don't worry about how the tech giants will weather the AI storm that they created, they'll be fine. Another ginormous company, but a much more secretive one this time, Palantir, partners up with JD Power. 
They will create AI solutions for the automotive industry using JD Power's automotive data to develop AI-powered analytics and tools for dealers and regulatory agencies. Yeah, the automotive industry is not doing so well lately, they need an AI boost and it seems like they will get one. Let's talk about another huge company you've probably never heard of before. Hynix is a South Korean company that produces chips and hardware for Nvidia and Apple. They had an amazing quarter, surpassing expectations, and it is now estimated they will surpass the expectations even more than it's expected. A lot of expectations here. And another big chip company, this time from Taiwan, will invest $3 billion in a new chip plant. TSMC, which is the world's biggest chip maker, plans to double its production capacity. Everyone is working on AI stuff frantically. Everyone needs more processing power, there are shortages of AI chips. Wow, it's all about those chips now, isn't it? I gotta say, this is a crazy race and I love it. Just don't destroy the world in the process and we will have a great time. Speaking of destroying the world, US senators from both parties are worried about the AI's ability to help non-state actors develop biological weapons. Oh, so it's okay when state actors do it? Is that what you're saying here? Okay, let's not even go there, I don't want this video flagged with one of those you-know-what virus labels. How about no biological weapons at all? State actors or non-state actors? Nobody gets to play with AI to make custom-tailored bioweapons, huh? That sounds like a good idea. Yeah, but then China will make it... Uh... Okay, but do you have to do everything that China does? Would you jump off a bridge if China did it? I guess I fear global communist regime as much as the next guy. But sometimes the politicians use China as an excuse to just build insane weapons. Speaking of China, they actually seem to be trying to utilize AI in their military and maybe build crazy weapons for themselves. So far, their success in that is limited and the ban on exporting chips to China plays a big role here. However, they are seeing some incremental progress and that progress may start to speed up soon. This opens up a lot more potential for conflict with the US and other countries. You know how it goes, one side develops AI weapons, the other side gets jealous and develops better AI weapons, and the weapons are so nice and new and shiny that it's almost a shame not to use them. And the next thing you know, we're all back to being various molecules. And while we're on the subject of obliterating ourselves, the future of war is based on autonomous systems. Ships without crews, swarms of drones, self-directed weapons, it looks like the AI will take the job of the soldiers more than anything else. God only knows what will those AI weapons look like, I bet they're working on some insane stuff behind the curtains there. And finally, since we're talking about AI weapons, Palantir CEO Alex Karp believes that's not such a bad thing as long as he can make some money out of it. Honestly, this is a pretty good article, but the main point is too familiar. It's better that we create AI weapons or else the other guys do it first and we're at a serious disadvantage or even defeated. And the sad thing about the nature of our reality and geopolitics is that CARP has a point here. Probably nobody knows exactly how likely it is that China or another country that's cool with authoritarianism is serious about creating AI superweapons, but we're all confident that they're at least thinking about it. How do we know that? Because we're thinking about it. And if we're thinking about it, they're thinking about it too. And we know they're thinking about it. And they know that we're thinking about it. And they know that we know that they're thinking about it. And the pressure mounts and the uncertainty rises and whoever draws first has an advantage. So why not just go for it, right? Well, honestly, I don't like it when warmongers are right, but they often are. How much do you trust China or other authoritarian regimes to not pursue AI super weapons in scenarios where so much can go wrong? I can tell you one thing, I trust the devil I know much more than the one I don't. And the devil I know still doesn't send people to labor camps because of their religious beliefs, at least not yet. And unless that happens, I will continue trusting the devil I know a bit more than the devil I don't. That said, a continued one-upmanship with AI weapons is still a terrible idea. It's just that we don't know if all the other ideas are even worse and for the time being, that's the way it is. That was the AI report. I hope I gave you a little something to think about. If that's so, like and subscribe and I will see you tomorrow.